the recording now and we'll get going. So um, a brief introduction to Laos Volunteer Centre. Sorry, I went the wrong direction there. The slides are not working now. Yeah, so a brief introduction. We are a registered charity ourselves. We're a not-for-profit organisation ourselves. Um, we're an independent charity, so our focus is very much on County Louth. But we are a member of 28 volunteer centres and information vol in volunteer information services all across Ireland and an affiliate of Volunteer Ireland. So Volunteer Ireland, they are the National Volunteer Development Agency for IVOL and they manage IVOL at national level. So IVOL is the National Volunteering Database. Many of you are probably registered on IVOL um, and we manage IVOL at the local level. So the roles that are available for people who are based in County Louth. Um, we manage that aspect and um, you can, as a volunteer who's registered with IVOL through ourselves, apply for roles further afield. So you could apply for roles in Monaghan or Dublin or Meath and um, you're not limited to roles that are available and now I suppose that's been the great advantage now in the COVID era where we're talking about things like volunteer from home roles, that there are a broader base of roles available to you. You could apply for a role that where the organisation is based somewhere like Cork, but you can do the role from home. So it's giving you a... Um, I suppose a bigger database of volunteer roles to access. Our core funding does come from the Department of Rural and Community Development to strengthen and support volunteering. So that's really what we're about. And our mission is to help individuals to find meaningful opportunities to volunteer. Um, and that's really what a day like today, a session like today is about, is to hopefully showcase roles to you that you might find meaningful for you. And there's all sorts of reasons why people would come to volunteering. Um, you know, it could be to kind of give something back or to make a difference, to be involved in your community, to gain some skills or experience that we know um, Live Volunteer Centre has actually been around since 2003. In one guise or another, we were originally Drahada Volunteer Centre um, and then we expanded and we take took in the whole of County Louth and we've been around a long time. So we know that there's all sorts of reasons for why volunteering is meaningful to a person. And I suppose we were a little bit challenged in the current era because a lot of volunteer roles have gone or a lot of people who are fabulous volunteers in our community um, can't access volunteering anymore because they may be cocooning or, you know, they may be looking after another person who's cocooning. And there's all sorts of reasons why. So um, in that challenge, we kind of ourselves and other volunteer centres came up with the volunteer from home campaign. And we've been working to... Um, it, not just to create but to foster and encourage organizations to offer opportunities for you to volunteer while staying home and staying safe and that's become even more pertinent now with the level five restrictions when we have to stay within our five kilometer radius and that obviously has restricted volunteering opportunities even further so again that's what the purpose of today's session is is to give you an idea of what you could possibly be doing as a volunteer while staying safe at home during the COVID crisis but also maybe moving into the future that there might be opportunities that you could stay with in the longer term as well. It might not just be for the current situation. And the other thing, the other reason why we're so positive in terms of volunteering and why about meaningful opportunities to volunteer is, is um, we feel and we know that volunteering is good for you. So it's good for our community and it's good for the individual who participates in volunteering. Um, and I think, I suppose this is, um, highly relevant actually when we think of um, Hattie speaking from SOSAD and Karina from Turn to Me and um, their organisations and they'll speak about their organisations whose role they have a focus on um, mental health and wellbeing and it's something that's been really brought to the fore in the current crisis of COVID as well where we have to look after ourselves and mind our own well-being as well and how challenging things are at the moment and just to say I suppose what volunteers have said to us so last year people who volunteered said, through us said and 87% felt they had a greater, they felt a contribution to their community had increased. And there's all sorts of evidence that says that that feeling um, creates a positive sense of well-being in general. 81% said that their confidence had increased and there's all sorts of reasons for that. It's connecting with other people, it's doing something new. There's all sorts of reasons why volunteering might help to uh, increase your confidence. And then coming again to the mental health and well-being piece, 77% of volunteers said that their, their general well-being had improved as a result of volunteering. So we hope that you, if you get to volunteer, or are already a volunteer perhaps, that that's uh, the experience that you have. But I suppose I will talk a little bit later about um, what we do in terms of Live Volunteer Centre. But one of the things we do do is offer you an opportunity to apply for a variety of roles. So um, you can try different things out as well through ourselves. 
So hopefully if one thing isn't clicking for you, that something else will, and that you will get that sense of overall general well-being being improved as a result of volunteering. So talking about well-being, I'm going to invite Hattie Billingham from um, SOSAD to speak now and, and to talk about the organisation and what they do and what opportunities to volunteer might be available to you. Hi, uh, my name is Hattie and I am the coordinator for SOSAD in Dundalk. So I'll give you a bit of background about SOSAD. We are a suicide prevention charity, but we work on the basis of suicide prevention through early intervention. So we don't just work with people that are suicidal, we also work with anyone who is facing life's challenges and needs support. We have five offices based in the Northeast. We have Dundalk and Drogheda in County Louth. We have an office in Carrickmacross, Navin, and one in Cabin Town. Um, last year, we provided 15,000 hours of free counselling and we had 853 new clients approach us. So if we could go on to the next slide. So we offer a number of services, not just the counselling. Um, we also have a 24 hour support phone line. We offer bereavement support to people who have been bereaved by suicide. And this year, we've also moved into just generalised bereavement support because it's been a very difficult year for any bereavements. We do suicide interventions and safety plans with people who are at risk. We also have advice and information services. So a lot of people approach us that need support either to help someone in their family or one of their friends, and they can come to us and have a chat with us. We also do talks to schools and other public groups around mental health or any particular issues that they need covered. Okay, next slide. So we're just gonna go a bit into the benefits of support, uh, if volunteering would so sad, apologies. So there's a lot of opportunity with our organization to develop your skills if you're interested in mental health at all. So we have a whole range of roles from administration. Um, a lot of people that volunteer for administration might not have any previous experience with working with mental health. They have the interest and we help train them up. And it can be a great way to start really exploring if this is an area that you would like to work in. Um, I'm in quite a unique position where I'm the coordinator of SOSAD now, so I work there part time. But before I became the coordinator, I volunteered in a number of different positions throughout SOSAD. So I started off with fundraising, I moved on to administration, I became a support worker, which is um, supporting the clients that are coming in in between their counselling sessions. And throughout all of the roles that I did, this, the sense of community in SOSAD, you can't describe it. It's been brilliant. I've made friends for life over the years. Um, I always felt like I was really given back to the community and I was always very, very proud of my position to volunteer. Um, also, a lot of the roles are on your schedule. Um, there's a lot of flexibility. So when I first started, um, my little boy was very young. So my time kind of chopped and changed. And um, in SOSA, we have the abilities to cater for that. Um, then obviously the training. Um, we will signpost you to have training. We do offer training opportunities. Um, and I'll go further into that when I go into the, um, the remote roles. So if I could get the next slide. So oh, sorry. Hopping. So at the moment, and this is what we're going to focus on today, we have two remote roles available um, that we are currently looking for volunteers for. So the first one that I'll go through is the suicide intervention officer, or we call them SIO for short. And this is being an, a listener on our 24 hour helpline. Um, during the day, the 24 hour helpline is answered in the office. So the SIO takes the phones when the office is closed. So this will include weekends, bank holidays and night times. So it will either be one night a week or one night every second week that the volunteer would be asked to commit their time. And it is quite a long shift because it is overnight from the office closes at nine o'clock till 10 o'clock the next morning. But it is not constant, you are on call. So it really depends on the night, how much volume of calls you would get. Um, with this role, we are at the moment, because a lot of our training programs are shut down due to COVID, we are looking for people who have previous experience 
with either some kind of care and role. Now this could be like volunteering. A few of our volunteers that are SIOs at the moment would have previously worked with either the Samaritans or different helpline sources. Um, a few of them are counsellors or life coaches. That's the kind of um, previous experience we're looking for just at the moment until we can get our training plans back in action. Um, there's a lot of support for this role. We have um, every second week we offer group supervision and that you always have a mentor available for you at any time, any day. Um, the nature of the calls are greatly different. It's no two calls are ever the same. Um, we have sometimes we would have to do crisis interventions with the callers. Other times it's that people are lonely and they just want someone to listen to them and someone to talk to or just someone to bounce their ideas off. It's it's a very fulfilling role because over the course of the phone call, you can feel that people are beginning to relax, that they're beginning to calm down. And there's that's to know that you have helped someone just just by listening is is an absolutely wonderful feeling. Then the second row I'm going to go through, and this is our new role that I'm really excited about, is we are setting up some services now for So Sad for young people. And one branch of this is going to be the messaging support service. This is hopefully going to be launched in February 2021, all going well. Um, we had a little bit of a delay again due to COVID and trying to get everything organized. These things never fully go to plan. So basically the messaging support service is going to be aimed at young people from 16 to 24 years old. And it will be like web texting or Facebook Messenger, just it will be run through our website. So people will be able to contact us at any stage of the day. We found a lot of people when we say to them, oh, if you need support, why don't you contact our helpline? They can be very anxious about physically ringing someone and they will be more comfortable with texting, especially in the younger group. So we're currently setting this up. We're very, very lucky that this branch of our project has been funded by the Energy for Generations Fund by the ESB. Um, at the moment, we are looking for volunteers. We need approximately 30 volunteers all in all, which is, is going to be, it's the Loud Volunteer Centre have been a massive help with getting some of these already. When it comes to the actual role description, you will be actively listening to people who are messaging. So this will involve just talking to them, allowing them, sorry, did you see a question come in? The, the administration role is available at the minute, Stephen. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, you'll be listening to them and we will do training on active listening. It's not that dissimilar to actually listening to someone face to face or over the phone. Um, it would be a commitment of four hours per week is what we're asking for. And this role, again, it can completely be done from home. Um, the software that we are using can be used on a mobile, a tablet or a laptop with full supervision in the interface, which is brilliant. Um, you have a mentor, so you have a lot of support. Um, each volunteer that volunteers for this role will have a mentor that they can go to if they have any questions about the software, about a particular chat, um, or if they need support, if they are struggling, because of course the nature of the calls, it can be or the, the message and it could be quite difficult. One of the things that we're most excited about this is that we have full training available. We are providing all of the training necessary. Um, there will be tra training in crisis intervention, um, there will be training in child protection. There will be training on the software and there will be training on kind of so sad, like in-house training in regards to our policies and procedures. And all of this is going to be done virtually over Zoom. So all in all, it will work out as about six days of training over three months, which is we're really excited to have because we've not really been in a position to offer this much training before. Um, there's going to be supervision for this as well. So it will, other than your four hours that you're asked to be on the support service, we're also, you also have to attend um, 
once every two weeks a half an hour supervision session where we will be checking in with a counsellor to see how everybody's getting on or if there's any ways we can improve the service so that's um if you want to register for either of those roles both of the positions are available on ivo and through the louth volunteer center um, and it has a kind of full role description for both going through. I'm not going to go through every single detail, just a kind of overview. Um, with the message and support service, there will also be kind of progression opportunities in regards to then yourself becoming a mentor if it was something you were very interested in. And down the road, once we're able to open up a drop in, there will be a drop in centre for young people that will be linked to the messaging service. So that will be a progression role as well which very, we're very excited for this one. Um, we definitely, we found over the years that young people definitely need a lot more support and they need support that is on their terms, not on our terms. So they'll be more likely to reach out. So I'll be available for questions afterwards. And thank you so much for listening. Thanks a million for that, Hattie. Um, Sorry, back to myself here, Gornia. Uh, just a couple of people came in just as you were kind of nearing the end of your session there, Hattie. So for those of you who've come in, Hattie was just outlining roles that SOSAD currently have available, remote roles, and we will be sharing the links to those roles after as well. They'll be in the chat and we'll send an email later as well. So thanks for that, Hattie. And actually really interesting to hear the progression that you have from being a volunteer to now being a coordinator in SOSAD and, and the opportunities that are there. So I'd like to invite Karina now from um, Turn To Me to have a chat about that organisation and the volunteer roles that are available. And then we'll have a question and answer for Hattie and Karina then, and then we'll talk about other volunteer roles that are available. Sure. Thanks, Emilia and Grania. Um, so my name is Karina, and I'm the online community manager for Turn To Me. Um, so we are an online mental health charity. and um, We were always online, even pre-COVID, so since 2009, we've been offering our services there. Um, so historically, we were available to adults 18 plus. But since June, we've opened up our services to 12 to 17 year olds. So we are now recruiting both adult volunteers and young people volunteers age 16 and 17. So if you can move on to the first slide, please. So these are the three different services which we offer all online. So it's not face to face. Uh, we have a 24 seven moderated peer support network. And this is our thought catcher forum. So when I say it's moderated, it means that there is a staff member online as well. So they'd be watching this forum 24 seven in case anyone was in crisis. And we have online instant chat support groups, which are facilitated on our, through our website. And so they're weekly anonymous confidential peer support groups on a wide range of issues provided through instant chat and messaging. And I will go into more detail on those two services shortly. And then we have counselling online. So it's free sessions, up to six free counselling sessions online for adults delivered via chat, video or email. And then young people and couples can get up to eight free sessions online via our website. And um, so for the young people, just so you're aware, it does need a parent's permission um, before they can take part. OK, and um, so I'll have the next slide, please. So these are the two volunteering opportunities. So we don't offer any volunteering opportunities in the counselling service but on the 24 seven moderated peer support thought catcher service. Um, as I mentioned, it's available for adults and young people. So when you sign up to the website, you have to give your date of birth. If you're aged between 12 and 17, you'll be on the young person side, 18 plus with the adults. So site users post their thoughts publicly on the forum oh, and other yeah. site users and volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, I'll just continue on there. Yeah, sorry. So, and then uh, other volunteers, other site users and volunteers would respond to them with support. So, obviously, um, you would go through a training session with us on how you might Id ideally support the people. Um, we'd have supervision as well, similar to SoSAD. And then we have um, like a Slack channel where volunteers can keep in contact with each other and they can also reach the moderators via that um, service as well. So, the staff, if they did have a question for them. But in general, the peer support is about your own life experience. Um, we have professional services on the web website if they wanted to speak to a professional. So just to remind us, it's a peer to peer, so a friend to friend support network. It's all online, so it's not face to face or um, over the phone or Zoom or anything like that. You would be typing back and forth to someone on the website. Um, and it's not a one to one service. So multiple people can respond to the same person. And um, the other option we have are online instant chat live support groups. So volunteers can join one weekly live chat support group. Um, and again, it's a peer-to-peer -peer service. You are only bringing your own experience and um, you're not there as a mental health professional, 
but tra uh, trained and qualified counsellors do run the groups just to keep them as safe spaces. Um, but again, it is very peer to peer led. They just try to keep it on topic. Um, and the topics that we have, there's a lot of parenting groups for different age groups, anxiety, feeling down, suicidal thoughts and feelings, feeling stressed. And it has recently launched frontline workers groups. So for nur nurses, teachers, um, coping with COVID is a topic, creating healthier habits, and there's groups for uh, GPs as well. So there's lots of different options there. Those groups are on at different times. So they're on seven days a week, morning, afternoon, evening. And we'd be looking for people to log into those for one hour a week. And similarly with the moderated peer support, the thought catcher, um, it's one hour a week as well. And because I can't give you a visual of what these services look like, if you do go to YouTube and go to Turn To Me, we have our own YouTube channel. And I have videos up there where I give a guided tour of the website so you can see what both of those look like. So it's a brief presentation and then you'll see what both of those services look like. Okay, I'll go to the next slide, please. This is just how we give it a basic overview of what the role is. We're looking for you to help build and maintain the Turn To Me online peer support community as a safe and supportive space for adults who want to talk about their mental health and now young people as well, 12 to 17. Uh, so we ask you to respond to and show support for community members via Thought Catcher and or the live support groups. Leave supportive comments and or signpost, signpost other site users to useful content. Like we have articles, we have podcasts and we have the counseling if you thought it was relevant, other groups, okay. And then we ask you to help with the basic moderation and management of our website so you'd familiarize yourself with our guidelines and you can report comments to staff members as necessary. There's a tool on the website where you can just flag something just to get a moderator, a staff member's attention. So we would ask you to keep an eye if you thought someone needed an extra bit of support from a staff member or if they've said something very inappropriate that you would flag that content for us. Okay, the next slide, please. So the volunteer criteria, um, so there's two separate age categories, as I mentioned. If you want to volunteer on the 12 to 17 year old site, you have to be 16 or 17 years old. And for adults, it's just you have to be 18 plus. Um, at the moment, um, we require at least one hour per week every week. And the duration of the volunteer role is presently three months, but this may change in the new year as we are reevaluating the volunteer program. So just this evening, I'll be having a training session and I won't be recruiting again until December, but I do want to try and get people to put their name forward now and I can answer any questions that they have for training in January, 2021. Now, I suppose we've only had volunteers since June. So this is very much a pilot program for us, which is why um, we only ask for one hour a week for three months, which is 12 hours. But I suppose it, going forward, we probably will be asking for maybe 52 hours if we ask for one hour a week for a year or 100 hours. We haven't discussed it ourselves yet, but just so you're aware, we will be asking for more, more than one hour a week for three months in January 2021. But of course, I will outline, with this, outline this with you beforehand and um, before you commit to anything. So for young people 16 and 17, you do need to have parental permission to get involved. We do a meeting via Zoom, there's a parental consent form and there's guard of vetting as well as training and then a few external tasks. Uh, like we get you to, to respond to a few sample responses and just give you feedback and things like that. And similarly for the adults, obviously you don't need anyone's permission, but it will be the same thing. We have Zoom interviews and we have the training that you have to go through and a number of different forms. Um, and I would be your supervisor as well. I'd be your direct contact if you did have any questions there. Um, okay, I'm just gonna move to the last slide, please. Or sorry, sorry, yeah, last one, yeah. Uh, so the benefits of volunteering with us, uh, so giving back at a time when the mental health of both adults and young people across Ireland is in need of extra support. I think that's very clear to a lot of people um, that it is a, a very bad time for mental health and volunteering with the likes of us are so sad would be a very, very valuable, a valuable contribution that you could make. You don't need professional experience in the area of mental health. So we do have the counselling and there are counsellors on the live chat support groups. You are just there as a peer to peer. So it's a friend support network. It's accessible online from the comfort of your own home, so you can access it on your mobile phone or on your laptop. We are actually updating the thought catcher at the moment to make it more mobile phone friendly, okay. because apparently something like 70% of our site users are, are logging in using a mobile phone, but it will still obviously be, of course, very easy to use on the laptop as well. And if you're interested in any of these areas, whether it be working or volunteering in them, or if, again, for young people, if you're thinking about studying in the future in this area, this will give you a really good insight into the mental health of the people in the country. So if you're interested in counselling, psychology or youth work, community management or development, health promotion or social work. Or look, as I said, as I said multiple times, it is a peer to peer friend to friend network. So I just want to get that across. You're not coming in um, as a mental health professional. 
And if someone is in crisis, there are staff members online. So you won't, you can just flag it and you can contact the staff member then. And we, we would support the people who are in crisis. And of course you could respond as well, but um, staff will be there to take that over. Um, okay, next slide. And that's just my email address there. Um, as I said, I think the videos on our YouTube channel and the Turn To Me YouTube channel are great. You'll get to see the thought catcher and what everything looks like. If you had any questions about even using the services yourself, or if you wanted to volunteer with us, you could get in contact with me directly. Um, ideally, of course, it would be great if you were registered with the Volunteer Centre and we could, we could get in contact that way. Um, but just send me an email if you do have any questions and I'll answer anything that, any questions that you have now as well. Um, but that's it, thanks very much. I'm on mute, sorry, I'm on mute. <laughs> uh, thank you both Hattie and Karina for that. There are some similarities, but the, what they offer is quite different in terms of the nature of the support that you're offering through your services. So I'd like to invite, um, I'm actually gonna stop the screen share here for a minute. Um, and I'm gonna invite anybody who'd like to ask questions. You can ask questions in the chat box, um, or if you would like to, you know, put up your hand, but I'm just gonna, I see there is, um, so, Thank you, Rebecca has noted there that she's going to be joining the SOSAD team soon. That's absolutely fabulous. Um, Joseph, you've asked for an email. Is that for one of the people who are presenting here today or? Right. Um, I know, um, hola. Uh, because, uh, Joseph, Joseph, he wants to uh, apply for the volunteering, but he doesn't speak in a very good English. Okay, so, so is you registered on IVAL? Has he sorry? registered? I, I'll be talking now in a minute about IVAL, the National Volunteering Database, and how to register and, and stuff like that. So that might be useful yeah. because then he can he can do it on, on the phone. He can apply for roles on that on the phone. Yeah, so oh. sorry, just to say there is a, um, and I don't know who else was thinking this, but somebody messaged me privately there. Um, just during this speech is there will be more more roles so we have these two guest organizations speaking to about mental, mental health and, and volunteer remotely in, in that realm but Gwani will be highlighting other roles that are currently available as well so somebody just did ask me that in the chat. Yeah, so I know some people didn't weren't here at the beginning so there's we're going to go into other types of roles that are more practical maybe as well but but um, I think, and um, Karina, as you said there at the end, mental health has become so important recently, and um, there are more and more opportunities for people to volunteer in that field, as Hattie was saying there about the new messaging service. So we wanted to kind of showcase them at this point because we are conscious of the well-being of our community as a whole as well. And um, is there any other questions? Okay, there's another question here from Philip. And um, Philip has asked, would there be any specialised roles for students of the 15 to 16? doing the GASHCO program. So Philip, we will have other roles that may be relevant for GASHCO participants, but maybe Karina or Hattie, I don't know whether you have any connection to GASHCO roles. Uh, will we take on 16 roles? If they're 16, they can contact us. Um, but I'm not totally, I'm not, I've had people contact me before, but if it is a number of hours that they need to do for GASHCO, that's fine for us. They can get that done um, and whatever they need, but um, they do have to be 16, but we, we wouldn't take anyone who's 15. Brilliant, and Hattie? Yeah, unfortunately, our, our roles, and I forgot to mention that in that, in when I was talking earlier, are 18 plus. We're only taking adults on, so we wouldn't have any roles for Gashka, unfortunately. That's okay. Yeah, I just have a quick uh, question for Hadi as well that might be, be relevant to everyone. Do you, you have any idea when the ASSIST training programmes will be back up and running? So the Applied Suicide Intervention Skills training that's required for some of your roles? Um, no, I was actually just talking to them last week about this. They have set up the on new online program, which is a mixture between the Safe Talk and the Assist. Um, okay. So I have yet to do that to see if it's adequate enough training. Okay. Um, but so far, they they're saying that it's definitely going to be 2021 for the. Okay. Um, but with in regards to the messaging service, that one's not required because we have the training and already organised. So that just really applies for the the SIO or if you were going to be a support worker in the office. Yeah, and also going back to Stephen's question as well, because you are such an essential service, you do have a role in the office for administration currently live with us as well. So. Yeah, we do. Um, we are looking for admin because like Grania said at the start, due to COVID, a lot of people who would have been administration or working in the office, they're currently cocooning and not able to come in. So we have taken on a few kind of part-time 
administration and we're still looking for a few more that would help us during kind of COVID times. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, so we're focused today obviously on volunteer from home, but there are some roles still available that people can actually go to if they are an essential service. And is there any other questions anybody else would like for Hattie or Karina? That's okay. So we okay I would to say you? that's a sign of having presented an excellent, yeah, an excellent absolutely. presentation. Everybody has all the information that they need and no question. I, I, I have a question for Hattie. Do you take older people for um, volunteering? Yeah, 100%. Um, to be honest, about, um, especially pre-COVID, 50% of our volunteers would have been um, retired. They would have been retired and that's when they chose to they had the time to give to us that's fine. Okay, um, okay. and we do offer extra supports if there's any needed with kind of technology or computer work that may be needed i do extra training on that like the ecdl well i have basic ecdl but i don't have um and I'd, I'd still be a basic user you know so yeah, yeah. like I can help you with if, the, if you did want to volunteer with us with any software issues and stuff. So we went yeah. with, we definitely, the life experience is always a really big help when dealing with uh, mental health. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Leah. Lovely question. Um, I might hold for a second again, just in case something something comes to somebody else's mind. Um, while I just want to say thanks for, I, I'm not saying goodbye just yet, but um. Really interesting and I'm going to come back to the importance of mental health at the moment and it's fantastic to have services that you know that provide supports to our community like uh, SOSAD and Turn To Me. It's so valuable and so important at the moment. So any more questions just before I move on to the next piece? No? Okay. Thank you so much both Karina and Hattie. Uh, Fabulous. Thanks a million for coming and giving your time to give the presentation here today. Um, we will be sharing the roles that you talked about with people who've attended here today. And as I said, this is being recorded and we will share it again. So I'm going to move on now to um, some other roles. So I'm going to talk about IVAL and some other roles that are available and a kind of a wider variety of things that people can do. Um, if you just give me one moment to share my screen again. Just maybe the girls to tell me if that's worked or not. Great, thanks. Okay, so IVAL. So uh, a lot of people who are registered with us today um, would have come through ourselves and maybe got notifications from ourselves, but we also have people who are not registered with us. Uh, Joseph may be one of those who we spoke to earlier. So I just want to talk about the IVAL database, which I mentioned earlier. We manage IVAL, which is the national volunteering database here in Loud. So Loud Volunteer Centre roles that become available in Laos. We manage that interaction between the volunteer and the organization, but also uh, we support the organizations to post roles on our system. You can go to iVol on your phone. It's a free app on the Google uh, Play or on the App Store, and you can download it. And it is a free app, and you can be looking at volunteer roles on your phone there or on your tablet, but it's also you can access it through our website, which is volunteerloud.ie. When you do go to iVol, um, I'm just going to go here and I'm hoping this will work. I hope this will open the IVAL uh, website for you to see. So can people see the IVAL website? Excellent. So there's a few little kind of hints and tips when you're using IVAL. This is the website on the um, on a PC or something like that. It's a little... uh, sorry, Bonnie, actually, I think it's still the presentation. You have a screenshot there, do you? Because I can see yeah. the slide in the background. So you can't see actually. OK, so I'm going to. Okay, yeah, no problem. Are we now? Great, sorry. Yeah, so um, on your phone, it operates a little bit differently, um, but the principles basically are the same. But on your phone, it's handy because if you have your location, um, your Google location, or if it's an iPhone, um, your app, I think it's the location app, is activated on your phone, it will open a map for you and you can see what's around you in your local area. But when you're going on to the actual website itself, and um, it is handy to click on the start volunteering rather than the home tab there, because the start volunteering tab will allow you to have, um, to click on different filters. And um, the other thing to note is you do need to enter a location in this field here. So whether it's Drogheda or Dundalk or Dunleer or RD or Castle Bellingham or wherever you are in County Loud, you can put that in. 
when you do that, you do need to go down and click on a location in this drop down field. And um, it, it will come up with an error message if you don't do that. So that's what they, why the error message is. So there, if you say Drogheda, for example, you could do it that way. And you can narrow down. I know we're talking about from home roads. And um, if you narrow it down here to say 20 kilometers, that would be roads that local organizations are looking for people to volunteer from home, or you can leave it more open and further afield. And that way you can see roads that, um, you know, could be from Meath, Monaghan, Dublin or whatever as well. So just to note that you can also filter down. If you scroll down here, you can see different types of activities that you want to do, or you can just click the from home button here. Alternatively, on our website, volunteerlouds.ie, we have a big banner across the website there that um, you just click on that and it brings up all the local volunteering from home roles so you can access them there that way. Um, other little tip to say, um, I don't know if you can see the join us box here. So if you're already registered with us, you click on sign in and you'll get an email with the little four digit code to log in or you can click on the sign up. It is, it is a good idea to be already signed in when you're uh, expressing an interest in volunteer roles because otherwise, um, if you click on the volunteer role and then it asks you to sign in, you will come back to this home page here and you'll have to go looking for the role again. The other little tip I'm just going to note, particularly because we're talking about roles with specific organisations today, is the organisation field here, uh, the, the search rather. So you can click on that and say, for example, we've talked about roles for SOSAD here today. So you can actually put SOSAD into the box, the search box. And then you can see there like SOSAD Ireland and Dog, SOSAD Drada, and you can see what roles are available for that organization at this point in time. So if one of the organizations, if it's a role that you're interested in, we'll have the link sent through to you, as I said earlier. But if it's the organization's work that interests you, you can actually search for the organization that way as well. And that's a handy way to look for roles with that organization. Um, so that was just, I just wanted to show you a quick kind of a, like a little whistle stop tour of IVAL. Um, and now I'm going to take you back to the roles that we want to share with you today. Here. They might tell me whether you can see the presentation now or you're still looking at the spreadsheet or the, the website. This presentation is great. <laughs> have to check these things. Um, OK, so just to give you some idea, and these are not all the volunteer home from home roles, but these are just a few that we thought we'd showcase with you today. So the first one I have here is Cards of Care. Cards of Care is actually a role that we're managing ourselves. And it's basically, it's very, very COVID-19 related, but you know, it's something that might work really well into the future. And it's to do with people who are uh, living in nursing home type residences and maybe have significant events. And obviously because of the way things are, are isolated from their families. And what the nursing homes are doing is they're providing us with basic information and volunteers who sign up for, the, up, sign up for this role will get an email on a regular basis from us saying um, Mary in Moor Hall Lodge ha has a birthday during this week. And you can actually you'd write a card or a note or a letter or a drawing or whatever it is that you might like to share with that person. And then it's sent. We give you a specific um, person to send it to and an address in the particular nursing home when it's sent to them. And then when it's that person's significant event, they have all of these extra cards on people who've shown they cared to that particular person. And it's just to kind of lift the spirits a little bit. Um, our local nursing homes have been really, really positive about this. And uh, the, at this point, the vast majority of nursing homes in County Loud have signed up to participate in it. So hopefully we'll be able to lift the spirits of lots of people around the county who are particularly isolated as a result of COVID-19. And one thing we are talking about in the office is this might be something we continue because we do know that there are people in nursing homes who maybe don't have family belonging to them and maybe are alone anyway. And so it might be a way to kind of lift their spirits in the longer term as well. Um, we are looking MS Ireland, the Loud Voluntary Branch. So in County Loud, there are a group of volunteers, a part of MS Loud, MS Ireland, sorry, and they provide lots of supports to people who have multiple sclerosis in the county, um, whether that, that's uh, peer support. Um, they also put on like yoga, exercise classes, events where people can come together. And obviously COVID-19 has greatly impacted them. So what a lot of people don't realise when they talk about people cocooning and vulnerable, um, there are obviously people in the older age brackets, but there's obviously as well people with particular illnesses and, and multiple sclerosis is one of those. And you can have people of all ages can have multiple, multiple sclerosis. So they would normally do lots and lots of fundraising, whether it's flag days, bag packs, vintage car rallies, and all of that has stopped in 2020. 
So um, they are looking to recruit people to assist them with online fundraising because they are quite, they're a local branch and their local voluntary branch. They don't have the reach of big organizations like a loan or like, you know, St. Vincent de Paul or whoever it might be. So um, we're just trying to assist them in broadening their base of people who may be assisting with fundraising for them in an online environment, given the way COVID is at the moment. Um, another role for any of you who might be crafty and good with your hands, not me, I'm no good at this at all, um, uh, St. Vincent de Paul, they've again been impacted greatly by COVID as well. Obviously their shops are closed at the moment for six weeks and they had to close for three months earlier in the year and that's a significant source of fundraising for them. But also what's happened is people were doing big clear outs and stuff during the, um, the last COVID and, and the current crisis or the current kind of lockdown phase, if you like, um, and they're not going that those things that normally would be donated are not getting to the shops. People are getting rid of them in different ways because the shops are not open. So they have this project where people can maybe make crafts that could be sold in the shops when they reopen again. Um, so maybe if a person is very crafty and very good at making things, maybe in this phase now when we're at home, they could be making things that could be brought to their local shop then um, when we hopefully will have things lifted at the beginning of December. Uh, this is an interesting one, um, I'm not sure if anybody who's with us today would have expertise in this area, but might know somebody with expertise in this area. Um, it's an or organisation called Look Good and Feel Better, and they work specifically with people with cancer diagnosis. And they are looking for skincare and kind of makeup experts to do Zoom um, calls with people, with their, with their clients. And they would talk about how they could maybe do, you know, en enhance their appearance and feel better in themselves while they're going through things like chemotherapy. So that's an interesting role. It is a specialist role. So you would need to have some expertise in the area of makeup and skincare and also need to be comfortable with using Zoom. And again, a kind of a specialist role. This uh, Cord Activation Centre is a disability centre up in um, Monaghan. And they, are, they normally come together for their Christmas party. Um, which obviously has been affected. And they're doing a rather lovely project at the moment where they're doing videos of their clients and they're putting it all together and they're looking for a volunteer to help them with the editing so they can put together this video of all of their clients so that they can celebrate Christmas together in a different way. So lots of ways where community organisations are trying to um, be innovative and change the way that they're doing things for their service users while they, like, you know, in a remote setting. And um, this is the National Council for the Blind of Ireland. And um, this is quite a nice role for anybody who's interested in befriending or providing supports directly to a person. And it's a telephone reach out and support volunteer. So it is, you would be, for two hours a week, you would be matched with a person. And it's, it's actually like befriending, but remotely. So you'd be doing it over the phone, checking in with the person, seeing how they're getting on, um, and then maybe reporting any issues that you might come across or something you're concerned about through the, to the NCBI team. There is training provided, and they do provide support to volunteers, and there is backup. Like we talked earlier there, um, Karina was talking about professional support and the backup that the NCBI team provides support to you there as a volunteer. So that's like a befriending role that you can do from home over the telephone. A little bit different again to the way things would normally be. And then, then finally, because I just didn't want to overload you with a million roles, <laughs> but there are more available. And as I said earlier, you can click on the banner on our website, volunteerloud.ie, to see all of the volunteer from home roles. But this is another role that we manage ourselves. It's called Critical. And it's in response to the increase in um, require, requests and need for support in the domestic violence services and domestic abuse services. And what we're actually doing is um, we are doing a managed food and other items donation drive on behalf of, um, it, it, in particular at the moment, Estrada Women's Refuge, but we did do it with Women's Aid in Dundalk and maybe doing it with them before Christmas as well. Um, and it's in December. So what would happen is if you signed up for this, you'd be sent a link um, it, it won't be just straight away, but you will be sent a link with details of what's actually required by the refuge or by the women's aid to provide supports to um, women who have access to their services and taken that really brave step of stepping away from a, a situation of domestic abuse and removing themselves and their families from it and looking for support, which is a really, really, really difficult thing for a person to do. Um, and Public Christmas is particularly trying. And what we have found through this project is... Um, financial coercion like so financial abuse is a huge part of uh, domestic violence and as a result women who maybe leave the family home or end up in a situation where they have no access to their own money can't access social welfare so and um, this is the support that we can provide so that's another one that we are managing directly ourselves in partnership with safe ireland who are the domestic 
abuse services kind of umbrella organisations and particularly locally with Women's Aid in the Dock and uh, Daughter Women's Refuge. So I know I talk quite quickly, but I hope you've gotten a picture there of the different types of roles that we have currently in IVAL um, and, and roles come and go in IVAL all the time. Um, and what we do in terms of Live Volunteer Centre, and those of you who are already volunteers with us may be familiar with this, but those of you who are not, just to kind of give you a picture, um, when you register with us, we, we call you or make contact with you within 48 hours. And, and then we follow up again in two weeks and six weeks. And just to say that that's really as a support to you. So in 48 hour call, call, we might be just checking to see, well, we'd be thanking to see, say thank you for registering. We might be just checking to see if you have applied for a role, kind of give you further information on that. If you haven't applied for a role, can we suggest something for you? Similarly with the two week call, it's checking to see whether you've heard back from an organization because a lot of the organizations we deal with and um, Hattie, you might remember earlier, she's the coordinator from SOSAD. She was originally a volunteer. So a lot of the organisations we deal with are led and managed by volunteers themselves. So we might follow up with them for you on that. And um, at the six week call, we might see if you've gotten started, see how it's going. So really those roles are, those calls are support calls. And um, I have our landline numbers there. Now our Dundalk office is closed at the moment. Um, but you know, you might see the number 041-980-9008 pop up on your phone. And that's actually us that's giving you a call. Um, the other things we do is, uh, those of you who've registered through our email for this event, we send out a monthly email. Um, and we, we, the drop-in service is closed at the moment, but hopefully we'll be opened again back in December, hoping that things go right again. And we send out text messages again as well about occasional once-off opportunities or events like this that you might like to register for. Um, all of our supports are there to support you. They're genuinely to support you and hopefully help you find a role that you find meaningful as a volunteer and that's of value to you. And once, I, I, like, there's so many reasons why people come to volunteering and sometimes just turning up for doing something once for two hours is enough for a person. Another person might want a deeper engagement with volunteering. And what we're trying to do is to have as wide a variety and, and as many opportunities as possible for you to volunteer and to provide the supports to you to volunteer. So I think Kayleigh's going to stick a poll up there now, um, but I would like to invite you, if you'd like, um, to ask any questions at this moment in time. Myself, Karen and Kayleigh are here. Um, I know there's some stuff coming into the chat box. I'm just going to double check there. It's probably linked to the roles. Yeah, so it it's linked to the roles and poll. Karen has the poll now. Something happened in the middle and myself and Karen got switched over again. Um, okay. Something I just wanted to mention there on your last slide, Cornia, you said our drop-in service is closed, but actually we, we are having one-to-one -one Zoom drop-ins should anyone want to have a one-to-one -one chat with any of us. Um, do free, feel free to ask or to contact us and, and that service is there. Like I said, we are here. Our office might be closed, but we are here if you want to have a face-to-face -face with us. Yeah, thanks for that, Kayleigh. I'd actually forgotten about the drop-ins there, so you can actually make Zoom appointment is correct.